Welcome to Space News from the Electric Universe, brought to you by the Thunderbolts Project at thunderbolts.info. A new space image reveals in astonishing detail so-called bullets of gas ejected from the Orion Nebula. The Orion bullets, which astronomers describe as clumps of gas packed with iron, are said to be 10 times the size of Pluto's orbit around the Sun. The astronomers envision what they describe as strong winds propelling the so-called bullets to supersonic speeds. But is this description appropriate for this kind of phenomenon in space? Cosmic bullets, in quotes, slam Orion Nebula in dazzling photo. Now, the photo is certainly dazzling. But as to whether they're cosmic bullets is a moot point, particularly when you consider that there's no known way of, of firing a bullet using a wind. Also, uh, winds in space really are not understood. Stellar winds are not fully understood. And to call them a wind is misleading uh, because the conditions on the Earth's surface are quite different to those in space. Any gas which is isolated in space will immediately attempt to expand explosively into the vacuum and not form a wind. So the question how you blow a wind in space is, uh, is something that isn't addressed either. I would say that the use of language in this article to support a, mo a modern myth isn't helpful. And I say this because the universe as a whole is electrically alive, and we know this now. The mechanical language of wind or water on Earth isn't able to describe the events we see in space. Looking at the images, they say that each cosmic bullet is about 10 times the size of Pluto's orbit around the Sun. Now, Pluto is about 50 times further from the Sun than the Earth, and we know that the heliosphere is about 100 times further away from the Sun than the Earth. So you're looking at something that's about 20 times the size of the solar system if you include Pluto as the outermost planet. So they're pretty sizable bullets. The question is, where are these iron atoms coming from if this is a wind? These images are taken at infrared wavelengths. This is what allows the use of false color to distinguish the iron atoms, which are shown in blue, from hydrogen atoms shown in orange. But how did this differentiation into discrete structure occur? What stripped away the electrons and accelerated them up to such velocities? Well, this is what electric fields do. The effect is actually rather similar to what you see in our own sun's corona. Charged particles accelerated up to levels required for the full range of detectable electromagnetic radiation. And how are the so-called bullets of iron atoms held in place in the extreme vacuum of interstellar space? Well, electromagnetic confinement is business as usual, where electric fields act on a plasma environment. Now, the simplest picture, I think, from the Electric Universe point of view, since Orion is a star birth region, there are lots of bright stars, uh, young stars in that region, and uh, amongst the clouds, buried in the clouds, and we know that electric stars have iron in their nucleus. They have uh, iron predominates in their core. Now, during the process of starbirth, a lot of stars are formed in the same region along a, a, a cosmic string, so to speak, a cloud-to-cloud a, a -cloud thunderbolt. And if one of those stars happens to be, find itself in the presence of more electrically, positively charged plasma, then instead of appearing as a bright star, they will become, in effect, a stellar comet so that you could see these blue objects, which are much larger than the solar system in size, as huge blue uh, glowing comets with no bright nucleus and a huge coma. From the Electric Universe vantage point, the similarities between comets and the so-called Orion bullets is not coincidental, and an understanding of the electrical environments of both is essential. The so-called Orion bullets have these colossal wakes, about a fifth of a light year, I think they mention as their size, trailing behind them. The theoretical work done on objects plowing uh, through space uh, show that this tail, if any, should be highly turbulent. But these ones are tubular and structured and filamentary, which is not what you'd expect from a bullet plowing through a gas. 
a lot of these bullets are in clusters. And this is also typical of comets that uh, will break into pieces. So that you could say that these are a fairly good analogue of uh, stellar-sized comets. One of the puzzles associated with comets is the size of the coma compared to the nucleus. A tiny piece of rock entrains a coma which is larger than the sun. Now this can only be explained in electrical terms. And here we have these objects which are five times larger than the solar system, if you like, or the heliosphere, and training clumps of gas, as it's called. Well, you can't do that unless electricity is the governing force. As I said, the acceleration of these huge objects to the kinds of speeds that they're talking about by a wind is really uh, an impossibility. On the other hand, it's known that in the laboratory, when you form plasmoids along a, an intense plasma pinch, as it's called, as the plasma pinch fades, the particles or the plasmoids within that pinch scatter like buckshot, so that you could say that these have been accelerated electrically from their birthplace by the simple mechanism that we observe in the laboratory. Wherever we look in space today, we see electromagnetic energies and structures that are unfathomable under traditional assumptions. But imagine what will happen to our picture of the cosmos as we begin to see the pervasive role of the electric force. For continuous updates on space news from the Electric Universe, stay tuned to thunderbolts.info.